Hi, I'm Monsignor Jamie, and welcome to Breaking Bread. On today's episode, we're in Little Italy, and we will be with the DiPaolo family. Lou DiPaolo will take us through all the different regions of Italy, so don't go away. Hi, welcome back to Breaking Bread. I'm Monsignor Jamie, and we're here in Little Italy at the famous DePaolo's. I'm here with Lou DePaolo. Tell me, Lou, how were you so successful? Well, Monsignor, it's not a question of success, it's a question of passion. You know, here at DePaolo's, we're here over 100 years in New York City's Little Italy, and five generations. And we have been dedicated. Working alongside my family has been one of the greatest rewards that we have received. So. Measuring success is not by how much money we've made, but how much uh, passion, how much uh, feelings we got working together with our family. How far back is it? You said almost 100 years? Over yeah, 100 over 100 years. years. We go back to my great-grandfather, Savino Di Paolo, who was the patriarch of the family, who first came to this country in 1903, settled here on Mott Street in Little Italy, and opened up his shop in 1910. And then over the years, all of his children opened up their own Di Paolo's. One in Brooklyn, one in Staten okay. Island, and, and several in Manhattan. Over the years, we've become the last. And uh, we've taken on the role, not only to maintain the spirit of the Italian immigrant, but we've taken on the role to represent the immigrant, the Italian immigrants, as a family working together. I work alongside my brother, Sal, my sister Marie, our children. Even my mother comes in on occasion, 88 years old, and she'll still come in to greet the people God and, bless and, and, God and, bless to, and to feel the spirit of my father, who lived, literally was just about born in the store. So we're very, very proud of it, but we also take on another role today. We take on the role to represent Italy through the foods of Italy. And as you can see, Di Paolo's is really a treasure of Italian food products. We have cheeses from all 20 regions of Italy, cured meats, olive oils, and fine pastas and vinegars. And we actually go to Italy, we go to Italy and, and literally break bread with the people that not only make the product, but where they get the raw material. I go to the farmers and see the farmers and work and see how they handle their animals, their cows, their pigs, and understand what makes the food so special. And that's so important because there's so many people from Italy and all different, all different regions. And you know, people say, oh, it's Italian. It's not Italian. There's different regions. And people that come here come from different regions. And you know, they want to cook a lot of their foods and you know, the traditional foods that they, they've always had growing up. And they can't find the ingredients, the proper pr products. And you offer that. That's, that's why so many people come back here because they can get the foods from their regions just like they had at home. That's, that's true. You know, Italy is comprised of 20 regions. Like we have 50 states in the United right. States, 20 regions, but they're very diverse. And uh, although when my grandparents and great-grandparents were here, they really were only in that Southern Italian mode, specifically from Basilicata, Puglia, Campania. Today we represent all 20 regions. Right. And we need to understand and identify with the traditions of each region. And that's what the Paolo's office today. So now tell me, uh, family members, who are still who's still in the business? Well, of course, my brother Sal, my sister Marie, and myself, right. we consider ourselves the caretakers. Okay. Uh, the matriarch is my mother. Uh, and when I said caretaker, and you know, people say, who owns the Paolo's? I always point to the wall and I show them my grandmother and my grandfather, my grandmother Conchetta, my grandfather Luigi, and uh, and then even going back to my great-grandfather, Savino. They're the true owners of this place. Right. Uh, we can't say that we own it. We are only the ones that carry it on. And today, we're very proud to say that we have the fifth generation here. Uh, my son, Sam, my daughter, Caitlin, my niece, Jessica. This is not just a, a business, a family sure. that's run by the family. Right. This is your passion. I, and I understand you wrote a book also. Yes. And I'd like to yes. uh, take a look at that. Yes. And uh, uh, I'd like to take a little walk around and see some of the uh, foods you have For here sure. from all over Italy. Sure. Don't go away. In a few minutes, we'll take a little stroll through this wonderful De Palos and taste all the different foods of Italy. Welcome back to Breaking Bread. I'm here at uh, De Palos in Little Italy with Lou. Now, Lou, I have to say, in Italian cuisine, there's olive oil, 
there's pasta, there's cheeses, there's garlic and tomatoes. And salt. And salt, exactly. Sale marino, sea salt. Very, and very important. It makes the food really right. come alive. That's right. Now, olive oil, tell me. 19 of the 20 regions produce olive oil in the world. And each one has its own unique olive varietal. Olives which came up from the Mediterranean, came up from the uh, area of uh, say Turkey, from Greece. Right. And as it traveled up what we know as modern day Italy, those olive varieties changed. And let me just say, there's different levels of quality of olive oil. What's the difference? For one thing, it's how it's uh, harvested. If it's hand harvested, picked and pressed within a few hours, the olives are going to be much more fresher, the polyphenols most of the time would be much higher. That's where we get all our antioxidants. And on top of that, the acidity level is going to be very, very low. And acidity is something we cannot taste. So often people taste olive oil and they say, gee, it's very acidic because it burns the back of their throat. We call that pizzica, a little pinch. That is, uh, denotes, denotes high polyphenols. And it's actually a good thing. But in, in the essence of the taste of olive oil, you have to go by your own personal sure, taste. Sure, sure. So, and what do you for have that, here? we have a variety of the different regions of Italy okay. of olive oil. From Tuscany, from the hills of Mugello, which is just north of Florence. Okay. The olive oil there is going to give you some fruit up front, but it's going to give you that strong pepper finish in the back. Next to it, we have a Sicilian olive oil. Sicilian olive oils tend to be very, very fruity, grassy aroma, green tomato finish. Okay. Really wonderful, wonderful on brushed on vegetables and Sicily being an island, very good with fish. I love my Tuscan olive oil with beans and on steak instead of butter. Okay. And these type of olive oils here that you see up here are what we call the state olive oils. Olive oil from, from Sardinia, olive oil from Liguria. The, 20, the 19 regions that produce it, we want to have a representation of it. And, and uh, the, the difference is so drastic that I'm going to find the right olive oil for you. In fact, at Dipalos, we let you taste it before you buy it, wow. before you spend a lot That's of money great. on it. So olive. they can come here and actually taste it before they buy before it. Before they buy it. So you have to choose the olive oil for what you're doing, but also for the olive oil of your taste. Now, that's great. Thank you, Lou. Now, let's go uh, taste some cheeses. Okay. Mozzarella? Sure, some of our fresh fior di latte, which is the mozzarella that we make here, made from cow's milk. And regatta also. Sure. Let's go. Okay. All right. So, Lou, you make your mozzarella right yes. here. This is what we call fior di latte, as I mentioned. This is cow's milk mozzarella, and it's made by hand. There's a difference between handmade mozzarella or fior di latte and machine made. For one, we don't control the moisture. We depend on very rich milk, and very rich what we call cagliata, or curd. And I just want you to see this. I see the milk this, coming okay, out. Okay, this is, this is what I, I, for lack of a better word, milk fat. This is not really water. It's the milk if fat. If you make it by hand, you're gonna get the milk fat. And when you take fresh mozzarella, fresh mozzarella means fresh, means made the right. same day and consumed the same day. Now, just grab a piece of that, and just be careful because it's, you don't want to spill it on yourself. Maybe hold it. A little right. napkin here. All right. Now you go to go to taste it. Good mozzarella should really break down in your mouth. You should hardly have to chew it if it's made right. If it's made mm. tender enough. It's and, so creamy. Okay. Now, that, as I mentioned, that's milk fat. And like any fat, when you refrigerate it, what happens? That fat goes back into solid. Whether it's chicken fat, right. olive oil, it's butter. If it's in a soft position, creamy, it's going to go back into the solid. And that's what happens to fresh fior de latte, or fresh cow's milk mozzarella. Right. And it's normal for that to happen. Now, a lot of times, if you go and purchase mozzarella, you can't leave it out. The next day, you put it in the refrigerator. The next day, what should you do? Okay. Leave it out? Some you people put it in the microwave for like three or four seconds. You, uh, you could do all that. You, you know, you could, you could do that to make it more tender. Right. Uh, me, I like to just leave it out for about 15 or 20 minutes. To room temperature. Then I slice it, and usually, usually if I'm going to eat it straight, if I'm not going to use it, it's excellent for cooking at that point because right. a lot of the, the uh, moisture went back into salad, and it won't make, if you're making pizza, your dough soggy or your lasagna too uh, liquidy. But if I'm going to eat it, I'd like to eat it with a, what we call the caprese salad. Right. The acidity of the tomato and the little bit of the olive oil automatically starts to tenderize the mozzarella. Now what about Parmigiano? You, you Parmigiano. got this in a big wheel? Oh yeah, well Parmigiano, you know, uh, it's often called as the, the 
number one cheese of Italy. Some are sharp, extra sharp. And... Well, the stagione di parmigiano. The seasons of parmigiano will make a difference, as you mentioned, in the characteristic and the flavor. This here is the spring season of parmigiano. And I want you to look at the color. Look at the color of the parmigiano. It's got this pinkish hue. Right, right, towards this, the center. Right, this cheese here is made in the high colinas, high hills of uh, Reggio Emilia, free grazing cows. It's the time of year, late in the month of April, several years ago, because it needs a couple of years yes. of maturation to really develop right. It's when the cows are feeding on young, tender grass, emerald colored grass, laden with wild flowers. Wow. So you have a combination of the grass and the flowers, giving this unique flavor, profile, unique color. Taste this. And then when you taste it, not only you're going to have that herbaceous flavor, but you're going to have a little crunch in it. Yep. You know what that is? What is That's it? a combination of some calcium from the grass, Right. But protein. When you're making cheese, you get rid of the water. We call it whey. And you're right. left with the cagliata or the curd. That's the fat and protein. As the cheese ages for such a long period of time, what happens? You get the separation of the fat and protein. Yeah. Those are the little white the whole, that right, you see right, over exactly. There, that little crunch that makes you have such a pleasing effect on your palate. Texture is as important as flavor when you're eating food. And that's what you get with, with good aged. Wow. Now I understand why you wrote a book. I mean, because you can see you have a passion for this. I mean, you're so knowledgeable of, of every different ingredient and where it comes from well, and how it's made. I mean, it's... The foods uh, of Italy are so unbelievably right. overwhelming. And uh, unfortunately, in my book, I had to select just but a few, a few of sure. the wonderful foods that Italy has. Yeah. But there's so much more. And, uh, and that's why the, book, the title became The Essential Foods of Italy. Paolo's Essential Foods of Italy. But believe me, it was very difficult to say what's essential and what's not essential because yeah. there's so many essential I tell you, I learned so much today. I mean, it's just incredible. I mean, it's really, I want to thank you for being with us. If they'd like to purchase your book, they can come right down here. You or they can get it here. You could get it here. This is my book here. You, you can purchase it uh, in any bookstore. It's even at the public library. Oh, really? Okay. The read section. And uh, you, you can get it on Amazon or you could come here and I'll gladly sign it. Or if you purchase it somewhere else, come and visit us, and I'll gladly sign the book for you. Well, Lou, thank right. you for being with us I'd like today. To give you a copy of thank my book. you. Thank. Would and, you sign uh, it? Of course, I'm going to sign it. That's great. Thank, thank you. you so much. I appreciate it, and I'm sure I'll be back again. So okay. thank you so thank much. You. Okay. He's a great guy. have with us today Michael Russo from the, one of the most famous restaurants in all of Brooklyn, Gargiulo's Restaurant. Michael, welcome. Good morning. Thank how you for you? being with us. Uh, thank you for having me. Now, Michael, tell us, how long has Gargiulo's been there? Gargiulo's been there since 1907. 1907. 1907. Original, now, are you the original the family? No, we, we bought it from the Gargiulo family in 1965. My, okay. father, my father and his brothers bought it. And your name is, you're the Russo family. Yes. So tell me, um, you and you have a couple of brothers? I have uh, three brothers, yes. And my brother Louis, who, who is pretty much the CEO, he runs the business. Mm -hmm. Then there's my brother Nino, who's pretty much public relations. I'm sorry, I'm surprised he's not here today. <laughs> there's my brother Anthony. Right. He, 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 he runs the dining room, he, he, okay. he orchestrates the dining room. And then there's myself. Right. Uh, I'm pretty much operations. I make sure everything's up and running, permits, licenses. Uh, All the important stuff. <laughs> well, to, to, to keep the business running with the with New York City, and I do most I do most of the purchasing. I do the fresh fruit, the fish. So there's really no one in the kitchen. No, there's myself. I, I run the kitchen. You run the kitchen, but I you're not cooking. I no, I do a lot of the you cooking. You do a lot of cooking. I do a lot of cooking. Okay. You know, our studio audience is watching, and every 
episode at the end, I prepare something. So today I'm going to prepare something a little different. I know you were coming and want to prepare something Italian or any pasta, mm. but this is an easy breakfast dish. Okay. And you know, a lot of our audience out there, they like to see simple things because, you know, people are busy. And what's great about this dish is that you can prepare it the night before. Mm. So if you have company or if you're going someplace for breakfast, uh, you can prepare it the night before. You get up in the morning, zip it in the oven, and you're all set. What it is, it's an egg, potato, and bacon casserole. Mm. And it's a very simple uh, dish. Like as I said, you, prepare, you start off with some bacon and I just cut up some bacon here. And I just took about four or six pieces of bacon, slices of bacon, and I um, just sliced them into little uh, pieces. I like to put just a drop of olive oil just to get that going there. And I'm gonna let this saute just mm. for a few minutes, have the fat burn off, and this will come do a little saute in just a minute or so. So we uh, have this bacon sauteing here a little bit, and I'm just gonna throw in a nice size onion that I diced up. And we'll let that sit together. So tell me, you're open seven days a week? No, six. Six days, what so, day? Tuesday. Oh, Tuesday. Tuesday's our Sunday. Okay, <laughs> Tuesday's your Sunday. You need a day off. We to needed, rest. even God rested one day. <laughs> now, I remember as a kid going to Gardrulo's, and I, the, thing, the thing that struck me the most was the big octopus, and it was tremendous. It was mm. there until you renovated it. When we renovated, we renovated the entire restaurant. Well, I assume because Coney Island is the aquarium, the amusement mm. park, and yeah. of course, Nathan's. Mm. Coney Island has really been revitalized. Oh, yes. And you're right in the heart of it. Yes, we are. Has it affected business? I'm sure. Uh, oh yes, oh yes. We have the, the the tourists are coming down to Coney Island now like like never before. You know, one thing we've experienced in the church uh, in parishes in Brooklyn, with you know a lot of new people moving in. That's for sure. In our parishes, you know, every Sunday we see different people. We see mm -hmm. a lot more younger families. Mm -hmm. We see a lot uh, more strange, you know, strange faces. People mm -hmm. that we don't. They're not there all the time but they're not the regulars. Right. I'm sure in your restaurant, oh, for uh, what, sure. what's going on in Brooklyn, sure. the same thing is happening. Yeah, Brooklyn, Brooklyn is, is the place to be. I think Brooklyn is the hottest spot in the country right now. Right, I believe it's it is. It's unbelievable. I believe the Barclay it is Center, Williamsburg, and now the new King's Theater. Mm -hmm. I mean, Coney Island, I mean, it's just wonderful. I it's, mean, and there's more still to come. Well, that's great. Uh, let's continue with this. I'm just put some peppers in here. Have some nice yellow peppers, gives it a nice flavor, a nice, um, Color. Let that saute a little bit. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to throw in some garlic. Normally you wouldn't put garlic with eggs, but since we have the onions and the bacon and the peppers and the potatoes, which we'll throw in in a few minutes, we'll let this cook here. <coughs> but now I'd say you have, it's not only a restaurant, it's a catering hall. Yes. So there's always uh, baptisms, weddings, we birthday parties. Functions. I know the diocese has a lot of functions there. What are some of your most famous dishes? Some of my famous dishes are uh, pasta pascualina. Which is? It's uh, uh, sauteed zucchini, uh, a little bacon, tomatoes, and a, and a cream sauce. That's one of my famous, of course, fettuccine gargiulo, which is another pink sauce, uh, chicken, prosciutto onions, mushroom, chicken, sauteed, little nutmeg, and a little, a little tomato and a little, a little cream sauce okay. over spinach fettuccine. Then we have the, uh, you know, we have uh, dishes that my father, my father invented at home that we that we uh, that we ate. That's great. I'm going to just go preheat our oven at 350 degrees. So Michael, we pre preheated our oven there, and then we're going to put this all together. Right now, what I'm going to do is um, I'll take a bowl. And I whipped up here about eight eggs. I'm gonna add about one cup of milk to the eggs. Just mix that, that up a little bit. I enjoy this. I don't have to do anything here. I enjoy it. <laughs> and then what we're gonna put in here a little salt and pepper. There's some pepper. I like it a little spicy. And we have the yellow peppers in there as well. I'm gonna put a little salt. Okay, just gonna whip that up a little bit. Make it nice and fluffy. Okay, 
Now what I have here is I have um, frozen hash browns. Now I can make, you can make your own potatoes as well. You can boil some potatoes, dice them up. What I did, hash browns work great. They're flavored, they're frozen, it's easy. But of course I like to use fresh a lot. And then I also have some shredded um, cheddar cheese, <laughs> a little sharp. So what we're gonna do now is first thing I do is I take the egg mixture and I throw it in a bowl. Okay. And then I'm going to mix in the potatoes. And you can keep these frozen, or if you're using fresh, they can go right in. It doesn't matter if they're frozen. And just mix that around a little bit. We then take our shredded cheddar cheese, about a cup of that, mix that around. And I'm going to take my mixture here. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take it off the burner, and I'm going to let it cool a little bit. Because I don't want to throw it in because the eggs, you don't want the eggs to start cooking. So I'll let that sit there for a moment. So tell me, I know in addition to all the events, you have a lot of priests. It, it is a priest hangout. Well, oh, yes, Why is that? Just ended up being that way. I, I really, it, they, as long as I remember, I've been, I've been in the restaurant for almost 30 years now. And since back then, since conception, when we bought it, always the priests, bishops, cardinals, Everyone. Everyone from He's the neighborhood. He's had Cardinals too, right? Yeah. I know Cardinal Bevilacqua has been there. Mm -hmm. He's been there. Cardinal Dolan's been Cardinal there. Cardinal Dolan's been there. Yes, we, we, we had pretty a lot of... It's, it's come on a Sunday afternoon, after Mass, when the priests, right. they want to relax a little bit, they just come to us. Right. That's, what my, that's what my brother Nino is, the social butterfly. Every priest knows right. my brother Nino. So, Michael, I'm going to combine my uh, bacon, pepper, onions, and garlic. Put that right in there, now that it has cooled a little, a little bit. Mix this around. When we go on our fishing trips, we make this. You do? Yeah. We, we do a, a yearly fishing trip, and this is one of the staples. I had this the first time on a ski trip. Mm -hmm. I was skiing up in the Poconos, and we were staying at someone's house, and that morning, they prepared it. And of course, whenever I like something, I always steal their recipe. That's, that's, and, um, that's stealing. It's, in, it's enjoying. <laughs> and borrowing. Enjoy, yeah. Enhancing. And I always, if there's something in there I don't like, I eliminate it. And yeah. that's so true. Any, any of these dishes, you can eliminate or add anything you want into it. So we have it in here into our casserole dish. And we're going to then put this right into the oven. And let's go bring this over. I'll be right back. Can I help you? Okay, I'll put this right here. Now, of course, voila, I already prepared one. Magic of television. <laughs> okay. Now, this casserole here, I did put it on a cookie sheet, just in case it, it would have flowed over, bubbled over, because it was rather high. I'm gonna let you taste the um, some of our egg and bacon potato casserole. And you can tell me how you like it. I tell you how I like eating at Gargiulo's and you can tell me how. So what you do is when you take it out of the oven, you stick a knife down right down the center just to check if the knife is clear, you know it's cooked. And as you can see, it's almost like um, potato and egg omelet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very similar. And of course you can garnish this with maybe some fresh strawberries on the side to make the dish look nice. You could put a piece of sausage on the top or anything you like. And if you want to put a little... No salt for me, no, no salt, salt for me, please. Watch your blood pressure. No, I got no problem. I just don't like to add salt. <laughs> I well, like, there's I cheese. Like to add, I like to add salt when it's cooking. Like you said, there's right. always the well, cheese. Well, there's cheese and everything. Right. And as you can see mm. how nicely it's cooked. That's very good. Right through. Right through. And uh, this, this is mine. I love pepper. On it. You like the pepper? I love pepper on my food. So let's taste and let me know what you think. Maybe a little hot. There we go. That's good. And of course, I always like to put a little ketchup on my eggs. I know it's a no-no, but... No, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. 
Well, Michael, thank you for being with us. I'm, I'm glad to I be here. I wish you and your brothers tell my all say hello. I will. And I thank you for being with us, and I'll see you soon. Well, at we're, we're always there. We're there for everyone. Okay. We're, thank you very much. Thank you. The next time you're in Coney Island, make sure you stop at Gargiulo's Restaurant. And thank you for being with us on Breaking Bread. See you next time. If you'd like to try this recipe at home, here it is. Thank you. See you next time on Breaking Bread.